Steve McGuckin is the UK Managing Director for Turner & Townsend. It's an international construction and management consultancy firm uh, here in London. And we're talking finance and uh, everything that's going on in the UK these days. It's a very busy, busy market here. And one thing that uh, we seem to have noticed a lot in the last week is there's so much residential development, yeah. both redevelopment and, and new development going on because everybody wants to move here. Are we looking at a bubble? Um. Potentially. Uh, I, m maybe five years ago, I thought this must be the top of the market, but uh, particularly prime residential has continued to increase in value in the UK. It's one of these things, while, while um, supply uh, is less than demand, um, prices will continue to rise. Uh, but the difficulty is uh, if um, we find that uh, the UK goes further into recession um, or interest rates uh, increase. I think the the danger is we've had uh, uh, low increase rate, in, uh, low interest rates in the UK for a number of years now, and people forget how high interest rates uh, uh, can go. And so I think the while the market's stable, or the market continues in its current uh, state, prices will continue to increase. But if the pound strengthens significantly, we will see a decrease in foreign investment, um, or if interest rates go up considerably you'll find a dropping off of UK interest. So I think that inevitably one or both of those is going to happen. The question is, will it happen quickly? So will we have a slowdown and a stabilisation or, or, or a, a significant drop? Uh, and you know, that, that drop could come if for some reason um, the foreign investment just stopped. Help us to understand the demographic here. Who, are, who is moving to London and who are all of these housing units being built for? Um, if I take the second first, one of the, one of the issues is that uh, a lot of the housing that's happening is, is what we call high-end resi. Doesn't not necessarily prime, but certainly high-end market. And uh, the reality is that a lot of the growth is not, you know, it's not just rich people arriving here. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot of people who just do you know, good, honest people doing ordinary jobs are moving into London in search of uh, opportunity, particularly young people, and they need to be housed. And so uh, one of the challenges is, um, uh, uh, rent is inflationary at the moment, so your people are coming to London and finding, you know, number one, it's difficult to, to find a, um, a property to rent, and if you find it, can you afford it? So um, with rents going up and values going up, inevitably a lot of the market housing that's been bought by UK residents is, uh, is buy to let. So you're getting a change of um, uh, ownership. Um, considerable change over the last five to six years, shift towards rental rather than uh, the, uh, uh, per, you know, a high percentage of uh, UK residents owning their house. Um, and that, well, it, there still is a high percentage, but that percentage is dropping, and it's dropping year on year as you get a, a, a more people um, looking for, uh, for uh, buy-to-let as a way of investing rather than into pensions, for example. Then you've got the other side, as I say, which is foreign investment, and I think that, that is a mixture of people who are coming in and buying um, you know, maybe one or two as a potential residence for them in the future, uh, and you're getting some people coming in and buying a whole number of uh, of uh, residences in a block, and renting them and looking at that as part of a investment portfolio around the world. But then you do have um, uh, quite a few people who are choosing to come to London and make uh, London their home, um, you know, from around the world, maybe a family home, etc. Um, and particularly with ease of movement uh, from Eastern Europe. Um, you know, we will see that uh, as Romania and Hungary come into uh, further into the EU in January, uh, we'll see uh, potentially a, a, another influx. Uh, but again, you know, the uh, you know we can't really, uh, I can't really see them coming in and buying um, half a million pound flats. You know, they'll be looking, they'll be pushing the uh, the rental sector um, or increasing the demand in the rental sector. So, um, but you know, in a, a way, the thing. But we do, you know, we do need people to come in and um, help the London. Uh, economy grow. Well, looking at the list of projects that the people and firms mm. represented here are working on, the word affordable yep. has been seen mm. in some of those. Uh, is that market being underserved? Um, I don't know if underserved in, in a way. I mean, there's certainly social housing. We need a lot, lot more social housing. I think that there's a target 
sort of a target of 35,000 units, and we're achieving something like 17, 18. And so we're actually delivering half the social housing that we need to in, uh, in London in order to uh, support the growing demand. And so, you know, so if you're essentially, if you're producing half of what you need each year, you're continually falling behind. The thing about social housing is that uh, you know you can you can part fund it through development values, um, but uh, you know the government hasn't got much money. You know, we all know we're trying to cut uh, spending in the public sector, and so uh, subsidy through uh, the government purse rather than through uh, um, uh, money from uh, developers' profit um, isn't uh, a, uh, a serious option for the UK government at the moment. You know, hence uh, restriction. And I think there's also the problem is just availability of sites. You know, the, um, the, the Olympics were taken, when you think about the big brownfield sites in London, probably um, the Olympics and Nine Elms, the Battersea area, probably the last two uh, big brownfield sites uh, uh, in London uh, with uh, reasonably good transportation that's accessible. Um, so we en you end up being essentially landlocked, what unless you? you're going to release a lot of green belt. One of your projects is the Battersea Power mm. Station redevelopment, and you're involved in another big infrastructure project, the, the so-called Crossrail 15 billion pound investment. Yeah. Um, the Battersea Power Station, um, are all of these generally good investments? I think it's a good investment from two points of view. Number one, you know, it's keeping people in the construction industry employed. Um, you know, number two, um, it means that uh, we can actually get people in and out of London more efficiently, um, and it's you know it's very good for property values. If you believe it's good to have a healthy property uh, uh, market, um, you know those areas served by the stations that will open uh, in central London, uh, you know already are significantly in, in, increasing in value. As we look at London today, the last time I was personally here was 1994, mm -hmm. and a lot has changed, and there's been. Uh, this new financial district that's been going up. Um, the real estate Canary picture, Wharf, you think? Be a, yeah, Canary yeah. Wharf and the Docklands and yeah. all out that direction yeah. and we heard that uh, China is about to invest a billion dollars or a billion pounds. Silver Keys, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes, in, in the Docklands. Yeah. Um, as you look towards the future, um, a lot of redevelopment. What, what are the hot areas in London that you're looking at? How is this going to roll out? Battersea and the whole Nine Elms, because it's not just as there's a Battersea power station redeveloped, but there are a whole series of schemes uh, in the Nine Elms area. And so, you know, it's a good place if you're looking to um, make some money, it's a good place to buy, but with all the development going on, it's, um, you know, I'd, I'd say it's a long-term position if you want to maximise the return, um, because there'll be the impact of development for a number of years. Um, so, so that's one area, but it, it depends really if you're talking um, commercial or um, residential or retail. Um, certainly um, areas uh, around Clerkenwell, Fenchurch Street, I mean particularly the areas that I've mentioned or well, the areas that have Crossrail Station serving them, there's redevelopment um, in those areas and so any sites that are available um, you know, are inevitably, you know, if you get the right plan permission, uh, there's uh, value enhancement opportunity. Um, the Docklands, you know, is continuing to grow. Um, I think you know, it's the usual thing if there's a, uh, anywhere near a good transport node. Uh, if you take um, Stratford City, I mean, it's got one of the best transport nodes uh, in London. And, you know, and so that will, uh, you know, there are schemes there with Planning Commission uh, that will be built out and will sell. Steve McGuckin, uh, thanks for dropping by. Steve McGuckin with uh, Turner and Townsend here in London 2013.